And so with that, um, it is my wonderful pleasure to introduce our guest speaker this evening. Uh, Spencer Holmes is a um, entomology and I think it's living learning, living learning, because we don't have earth science anymore. <clears throat> our district decided to get rid of that. <laughs> we don't need to know about earthquakes and volcanoes and weather. Meteorologists. <laughs> but we do. Yes, we do. So it's been woven into other subjects like uh, chemistry, not chemistry in the universe, or physics in the universe, chemistry in your system. Yeah. Um, and it's called Living Earth. So entomology is the study of bugs. We, I, I heard John mention that uh, creeks are what connect us. It is really what brings us together. And this, it runs through our communities with like blood through our veins. And I feel like um, the way, the best way to tell if an ecosystem is healthy is by looking at the lowest levels of life and sometimes getting down to the bacteria, the protozoa, the things that are in our soil that provide the nutrients for life, but also the bugs. So when we get to go out to the creeks and we look for bugs, I think that is a very clear indication of whether our creeks are considered healthy or not. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to the fantastic uh, Spencer Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, wow. Well, I, I will then wrap up the introduction part of uh, our round table here. So I'm Spencer Holmes. I've been, uh, I teach at Heritage High School and I've been teaching this district my entire career uh, since the early 2000s and I'm a resident of Brentwood. And, and uh, what connects me to the, the creek, we we ride the trail. Uh, our kids growing up, growing up, and playing around in Creekside Park uh, for many years. And and actually, we got involved um, pre Diane as well. And then there was Anne, and I can't remember who was even before her, but a uh, long time ago. And uh, so I was able to help with, um, you know, it, as our family had with the Creekside cleanups, and I've also participated in a benthic macroinvertebrate uh, sampling. Again, that was maybe 12 years ago or something like that. And then um, there was a, a creek survey, uh, Marsh Creek. We were doing GPS uh, measurements and mm -hmm. altitude and all that stuff back up off of Morgan Territory Road. Collecting plants, too. I mean, sampling plants, too. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so there were, uh, anyway, we're a lot, and with all these interesting stories, I, I, one of my entomology students several years ago had, uh, she and some friends were, you know, hiking up Marsh Creek. It was upstream of Creekside Park in Brentwood. And she found it looked like a skull sticking out of the mud uh, in one of the banks of Marsh Creek. And it, so she went and chipped away at it. And it was about, I think it was seven river otter skulls in a pile that were lodged in the mud for who knows how many years, decades. They were, and, and the skulls actually were uh, very, yeah, they, you know, stained from a lot of the mud and everything. but. And it was just the skulls. So there were no other bones around. So somebody beheaded a bunch of river otters, maybe for fur. We don't know how long we were there, but that was a very interesting thing. And uh, just last March, I think we did a, an impromptu, <laughs> spontaneous creek cleanup uh, just over where it crosses in the Valpour Road. So uh, anyway, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of kind of where how we've been involved in, in all this. So uh, I'm going to sing your praises yeah. a little bit more for those people who don't know. Mr. Holmes started in tomorrow. He's only, I think, the only high school in all of California. It might even be, I don't think it's the whole nation, but all of California has an entomology high school entomology class. And his students have gone to Big Break and helped them uh, do uh, insect collections at Big Break. So just, yeah, round of applause. Hey. Uh, and uh, this is the second year that it's one of the UC uh, in the A through B. It's a B college prep laboratory science. So that's uh, we're excited about that. Uh, so well, I, maybe we'll hit the next slide here real quick, and I'll just kind of show you what um, uh, what I hope to do because I, I we may all be in different levels of understanding of what an insect is. Uh, how they survive in different habitats and things. So I'd like to give you a little bit of a general overview uh, of insects. And there are several different types of 
development. And I know we all read The Very Hungry Caterpillar when we were younger, and, and uh, so we know the whole caterpillar cocoon the poop in there and then the adult. Uh, and then I kind of wanted to just go over some of the orders of insects. Um, all uh, animals are grouped, you know, with, we're all in this kingdom animalia, and then we're broken down and sorted in a big old family tree. And within insects, we have uh, over 30 different orders. And so those orders are, you know, ants, bees, and wasps, which are the uh, hymenoptera, and coleoptera are the diptera, true flies, and stuff. And so we'll kind of go over that. Uh, I did want to talk to you a little bit about water. I know a lot of you know about water and, and some characteristics of water, and that then drives the evolution of insects that live in the water and how they have to survive and how they are impacted with change in those bodies of water also. Uh, and then we'll kind of contrast that with some uh, with terrestrial life and what it's like to live on land uh, and some of the challenges of that. Uh, and uh, I was able to uh, get some uh, benthic, the BMI up there, benthic macroinvertebrate survey. Uh, there was apparently some trapping that was at one of the Creekside Parks. I think it's Brent Scott Creekside Park, and hopefully has a Creekside Park. I don't know which Creekside Park it was, but um, I got a spreadsheet of the organisms that they found in underwater there, and so we'll have. Uh, Go over that and then, uh, oh, yeah, well, anyway, something like that. <laughs> Sound good? All righty. So, um, and, and please feel free to raise your hand or chime in and folks on Zoom as well, absolutely just shout out. Uh, what I wanted to kind of start off with is what makes an insect an insect. And uh, they are in this group of Crunchy on the outside, chewy on the inside uh, organisms. Uh, they have exoskeletons and jointed legs, but this is the only group that evolved wings and have done flight. If you look at any spiders, centipedes, millipedes, shrimp, crabs, lobsters, any of them, no, nobody's got wings, okay, uh, except for the insect. Uh, those wings started out as little fleshy appendages a long, long, long time ago talking like 450 million years ago. And, and they were like, oh, check it out. And, and somehow it increased their survival and, and it kind of radiated when they took over. And I got a good question. Certainly. So you're saying that like spiders are not insects? Correct, yes, yeah, spiders are not insects. They're still in, the, there's this larger group called arthropods. And so, um, uh, and and uh, one real quick difference between insects and spiders, if, uh, if you're interested, is insects have three major body segments. So we've got head, thorax, and abdomen. Okay, what spiders have is their head and thorax are, are fused. If you can imagine your head with your arms and legs coming out of it, and then an abdomen. Uh, that's that's what the spiders have, and they and they've got eight legs, of course, rather than the six. So, uh, but there are other um, non-insect arthropods that are all in this group. So, so, so I'm kind of wing. It doesn't have wings. It's not technically an insect. Uh, correct. However, there are many wingless insects as well. But um, yeah, yeah, the uh, flight is the only thing that evolved. Now, I know there are some spiders who will run out of thread of silk and catch the wind and that's how they travel so you know you know yeah well, uh, are, they first, are they the first flying things like uh they would they definitely predated dinosaurs by 200 million years so yeah there was flight going on way way long <laughs> long ago uh so we've got three major segments and i guess loaf of bread what i uh, just they are lots of slices squished together, and their head is six slices, and their thorax, which has all the wings and legs, are three slices, and then there's nine to 11 slices that make up the abdomen. And so those, those big three are kind of what's going on. Um, there, and the reason why I'm sharing this with you is, is when you stop and look at an insect, whether you're at Marsh Creek or it's running across your kitchen floor or whatever, is, is you can, uh, start to appreciate if you don't already because a lot of people do um 
just the difference in shapes and sizes and colors and functions and, and everything else. And so uh, it's a pretty wild uh, large group. Um, I did highlight on here that the breathing happens in the abdomen. Uh, they have little little portholes uh, along their abdomen, and that's how they do their breathing. So there are no lungs, um, and so they don't do any breathing through their heads or anything. It's all abdomen stuff. So, uh, all right, sounds good. So that's anyway, lots of slices. Um, this really, if you if you look at it in terms of numbers of species and abundance and biomass and longevity on this planet, uh, they really have a corner on market on, on this planet. So uh, if we just took the pie chart, that is all the animal species ever described, uh, <laughs> a huge majority of them are insects, uh, both living and, and extinct. Uh, and then um, if you just look at all of, uh, all of the insects, you know, uh, Basically, you know, 25%, one, one fourth of that pie of all living animals on this planet are just beetles. That's it, There's beetles. There's, you know, around half a million uh, species of those. Uh, they also, you know, I know we're a very, as, as people, humans, we are very human centered and we think of ourselves as the center of the universe and everything. Um, They've been around over 100 times longer than, than the most ancient hominids on this planet, which is the fossil record. So they, they're a lot. We're, we're just in that little last 1% or less of the time that insects have been on this planet. So, uh, and if, uh, apparently, <laughs> if you took your own weight now and then did roughly a times 300, that's the amount of insect biomass that there is just for you. Okay, so they, they outweigh us a lot. Too. So but we're bound to uh, interact with them. And you're going to see them on our street, you're going to see them in your house, and on your windshield. Not as much as in the 70s, as I recall, though. I think they are going downhill. Mm -hmm. so, all right. That, that prank now just was one that was uh, visiting our classroom one day. And, and uh, yeah, we have a good time uh, with those. So, uh, all righty. Yeah, let's, let's try the next. Um, I do. Want to share a little bit on development, how they go from egg to uh, their adult form. And for the most part, insects are either hemi metabolism, it means like a half or a partial development. And then there's the holo, which means complete. There are some small primitive things that are considered a metabolist, which means they just they hatch out of an egg and there they are, and then they may you know, crack out of their little hard candy shell, and then they're the same size. There's nothing different. Little spring tails, you might find them around the creek and in the mud and things like that. Uh, but hemi metabolists uh, just are, I've got a slide that'll kind of show you uh, kind of how these go, but you have an egg and then you just have, let's, let's just pretend we got a grasshopper. Teeny tiny grasshopper, then it molts and you got a larger and it gets into its next largest and it may take three or four or five times you start seeing wings developing but they're just laying wing pads at that point and then they hit their final adult stage and then all the wings pop out and they're there and that's how they are the downside of that is that parents and kids are competing for the same source of food and so you know if you had a box of fruit loops at home you know you're grabbing out of the box just as much as, as your kids are, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, anyway, but holo metabolists, uh, there's a whole bunch of insects that uh, have a transformation. And uh, so you have this sort of larva, maggoty kind of thing, and uh, flies and antlions and beetles and, and uh, ants and bees and wasps, they all have this little maggoty kind of stage. Uh, and then they go into a pupil stage where there is some, uh, you know, big transformation. Often their entire di mouth parts and digestive tracts are completely revamped, uh, and they come out as a completely different uh, adult. And, and essentially, this would be like, you know, uh, okay, kids, I'll eat the shredded wheat, and you guys get the Fruit Loops, and and everybody's happy, right? Uh, you're not competing with your own children for food, and uh, you actually give them a chance. And so that's 
that's kind of cool. Uh, but that is the uh, the big transformation in the pupa stage. So you know, just in your mind, just kind of keep there's two, basically two groups of uh, based on development here. So. Uh, so here's the generalized. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. No, no, no. Okay. So now just slide the um, yeah, the, the, the and the meat pad. Hey, like, metabolites. Yeah, are there, are there still insects like that around? Just the very like there are little things uh, like jumping bristle tails. Even though they actually, and I don't have any pictures of those, but they're the very primitive mucky mucks that have been around for three hundred and fifty million years. But they just stay they small. Spring they don't, uh, spring tails are considered a metabolist. Yeah, yeah. Little, just tiny stuff that they still molt, apparently. Sometimes many different molds. But they don't really grow in size or anything. So, they're, it's yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. By the way, folks, uh, do not worry about pronunciation or mispronunciation or anything. Um, uh, so, we're, there's there's a lot going on in here. So, um, Mr. Holstein, yeah, spring channels, uh, there are oak trees, they're like on the <clears throat> oak trees, right? That's where you can find if I want to go look for spring channel, we're still there like on a so bark of trees and oaks and stuff like that? Uh, probably more like around soil and ponds and mud. They're they're very small, so they dry out very quickly. And so they're just going to hang to look at the moisture. And often they're found bouncing on the surface of water, oh, in the standing water. And uh, we do collect them in, in the school garden uh, sometimes, a little paintbrush. And, yeah. And just, but they, they jump and just, they're gone. They're, they're great. Uh, <laughs> So, oh, I know what I forgot to do. I want, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, let's go to that. Um, I, I will tell you guys just off to the side. It's it, uh, the school year started, but we're in week four now, and it's uh, it's been very busy. So, um, a lot of what I'm going to pass around and and show you pictures here um, is just sort of a a you know general view of what you may see in the area. Um, but these specimens weren't like specifically collected at Marsh Creek or any of the local creeks and stuff, but we've seen them out there and, and just as we've seen them in our yards and at school and stuff like that. So it's kind of a general overview thing. Um, so I just wanted to circle that pupa. And then if you are familiar with some of the common names uh, over there on the left are the ones that have that transformation going on. Uh, and then those on the right, uh, so you may see a small cricket and a large cricket, and if you look at it, you go like, oh, hey, look, not, eh, the wings aren't really, eh, I can still see a lot of the abdomen, there's not really wings going, so it's an immature one, and, uh, and all that, and so, um, anyway, uh, and again, these are, this makes up over a million species of insects, and so there's, there's a lot going on with, with bugs here, so, um, that's good with that. Yeah. So what defines a true bug? Okay. Cool. That, yes. So, and I noticed the title was like bugs of the creek, right? And so the word bug is a general name that we use just interchangeably for anything that we may step on or kill or whatever or see, right? Um, but actually the, the true, thank you for bringing that up here. Um, so true bugs have a beak and so they stab into either plants or animals and will drink their liquids uh, and all that stuff. Um, so cicadas and aphids, uh, some of our like pest species, some of you may have on your uh, like your uh, pomegranates and stuff and apricots, um, you'll have those leaf-footed bugs crawl around and they're just stab, you know, the world is their Capri Sun. They just you know, and just start drinking, right? <laughs> so uh, anyway, so aphids and cicadas and assassin bugs, and, and it's a very large group of insects, actually. And so technically, those are like the legit bugs, the bed bugs, for example. They're not just like general bugs, but they're actually in that group called bugs. So yeah, yeah, it's kind of, I hope I <laughs> clear as mud, huh? There, I have, did I help? <laughs> Hopefully. Mosquitoes, bugs? Um, in the general crunchy on the outside, chewy on the inside. <laughs> but uh, they are, so the mosquitoes would be true flies. So they are, yes. So I know there's a, there's a big, the Venn diagram kind of gets 
pretty blurry in there, but there's yeah bugs, which we often uh, refer to anything, uh, even viruses and bacteria. Well, oh, I got a bug, you know, I'm good, and all that. So, but within the insect group, there is a slice of the pie of the pie chart that is true bugs. So, uh, and the one characteristic is they have the, the stats in the stuff. So, um, yeah, yeah, okay. So, and notice uh, now this is good. Um, there, so here's the deal. Uh, we've got most of everything around here. Uh, and so uh, you're bound to see it. It's just how, how much you want to crawl into the weeds or bring a net and start swooping around. Uh, and a lot of these you may even find around your homes. Uh, and you know, on the sidewalk, at the park, but definitely uh, you'll find them, uh, yeah, in the creeks in, in the area here. So, uh, lots and lots going on here. Um, oh, there we go. I answered your question there too. So, yeah, uh, many of you have probably seen water striders or the giant water bugs out there, and, and uh, they're they're pretty cool there. Um, definitely, and, and again, ant lions and lace wings. I know Oakley soil is really good for ant lions, and um, then you'll see these little little like pits, you know, uh, inverted cones going down. And there's a really amazing predator at the bottom of those. Not a Giant mouth parts that look very pokey, but those actually are they function like syringes. They don't have any chewy mouth parts, so they, they've got these big old syringes coming out, and they just go stab, you know, and drink, 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 you know, and then they flick their <laughs> their their garbage out of their little cone uh, stuff. So ant lions are fabulous, and I, there is one, and I don't, I don't know when we want to pass this thing. Or maybe we can start doing that. Um, Pass around? Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, because there is an ant lion in there, and there's also a damsel fly. And the some lid, people, the lid is very like if, if you close it, it's really hard to open. Yeah, we'll pass it around uh, just <laughs> open. Um, yeah. If you are curious, I trust you all. You're, you can go ahead and uh, like pull them out uh, by the head of the pin, and you can look at them upside down or whatever. Um, you'll notice each of those has a location, date, and the name of a collector. These were all leftovers from students who, um, you know, graduated and didn't want to take their collections with them. So just pass those around. There's a smaller box with a couple of vials of various things. I was just kind of scraping and dumping them in there. Uh, there's some, some dragon flying nymphs. There are some spiders. There's all kinds of stuff. So. Uh, cool. I think maybe we'll go on with this. So, all right. Water. This is why we're here, right? The creeks. And, um, you know, when we stop to actually understand water, uh, and I know our, our uh, creeks are sometimes under a lot of stress, whether it's pollutants, drought, um, all, you know, chemical discharge. I remember pulling full garbage bags of dirty diapers and rotten chicken out of there. And there were people fishing downstream. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was pretty bad. Um, one of the things to keep in mind, and if any of you have had a tropical fish aquarium at, at home, notice that you often have an air stone in there with, yes, the bubbles help keep the current flowing, but if you've got tropical temperatures, uh, you're, um, not gonna have much oxygen in there. Those water molecules are, are fighting and kicking and punching and they're knocking oxygen, dissolved oxygen out of the water if you have warm water. So summertime, uh, water, uh, the dissolved oxygen in the water will really drop unless it's replenished by, you know, lots of bubbles and water flow and everything else. So, um, Cold water holds a tremendously high amount of dissolved oxygen. So next time you guys see pictures of tropical beaches that have like palm trees and coconuts and lounge chairs and all that, and you look out at the gorgeous blue and there's nothing there, it is an absolute death zone for, for any arthropods, uh, anything with gills. Uh, and that's why it's so gorgeous and blue because nothing would survive there. Got yeah, dolphins swimming around. They're breathing their lungs, right? So, uh, yeah. So the warm water is is uh, an issue. Oh yeah! Wow! Oh, nice job. 
Is that working? Yeah. Great. All right. <laughs> Wonderful. There's there are two uh, ethanol rubbing alcohol or not rubbing alcohol ethyl alcohol. Um, there are two different families of dragonflies here, and it comes down to looking at the wings. There are the little triangles in the wings going on, and yeah. So feel free to There's enjoy a dragonfly that. Dragonfly in there. That's kind of large. Yes. Yeah. One of the largest ones in there is a young dragonfly, uh, and all that. That would live in. So also, if you guys notice along this, where is this? This is uh, upstream of the water treatment plant. Oh. Um, and we're looking down, and and uh, actually, yeah, that's kind of where I pulled the bags of dirty diapers out. So uh, you're heading down, yeah, I was just I was terrible. Sunset yeah, by Sunset Park, yes. How, how much of our trees are being brought up in Oakley are, are natural? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I've very little right now. Because they, everything that's straight, and you can cut through this, but they, uh, everything that's straight is probably not natural because they did a lot of work after 1960 because we had a lot of flooding down in uh, Knightson, in Oakley. So my feeling from the little bit of history I know, and Don probably knows more, Don Alcorn knows they're probably all of them, he's right here everywhere. Yeah. Um, but they came through and they, they made it pretty straight like this. Look how straight that is. Yeah. There used to be a big bank that went out into absolutely consistent. Out into uh, yeah. um, that farm, which is Dwelly Farms. And yeah. they came back and they just totally knocked that out. Yeah. So anything that's that uh, straight is probably man made. Right. Yeah. Okay. When you headed upstream going towards Mount Diablo, eventually start to meander and see more trees and vegetation. <laughs> Everything yeah. is extremely yeah. better for Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The yeah. 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 more on up is, is natural. Yeah. And if you yeah. want to say go hike up Sand Creek, like go to Cotaloma and go over to Sand Creek and hike that down, you'll see how windy it is and you'll feel good appreciation of how okay. unnatural that is. I know we're watching on time. I mean, I will I will try to. Oh, do you mind going to the back? I'm just going to, I'll try to talk back or whatever. So I'm the meeting or whatever. Uh, okay. Um, another thing water is sticky, it clings to itself. And it, it can be under the influence of acidity and neutrality and, and being basic uh, as well. Those pH differences have an impact. Um, anyway, yeah, and you guys all know the ice flows. So yeah, let's hit the next one. So uh, if you are an insect that is living underwater, there are a couple of ways that you can still obtain your oxygen to stay alive. Uh, and so there are some gills. There's a mayfly nymph up in the top right, and you'll see external gills again on the abdomen. All their breathing is done on their abdomen. There's actually there's minor breathing on their thorax where their legs come out, but for the most part, just assume it's the abdomen. Uh, so gills, breathing tubes. These are uh, mosquito larvae, uh, and a lot of people are familiar with these. And again, their head is down below uh, in the water. And they, they are algae eaters at this stage. They're herbivores, they're strict herbivores. Uh, but that that breathing tube essentially is, um, for lack of a better term, I think the scientific word is a, a butt snorkel. Right? So they're <laughs> doing that, right? Uh, and then the other is called a plastron. And this giant water bug uh, here will trap air under its wings. And its wings cover its abdomen, and it will breathe that air bubble like a scuba tank. So the business end, this thing can catch and kill fish, uh, and it's not going to sit there and like drown and oh, I need to come up for air. It can it can have its rear end parked right at the surface, and it's got great oxygen, and its mouth is stabbing at a tadpole or fish or whatever. Um, and then uh, notice the back legs of this uh, back swimmer here, uh, they look like oars. So they have modified hairs that give them a lot more surface to swim through the water. Uh, we, I sometimes find those at the horse trough at Round Valley. Uh, and, uh, and there's a little cow, thing, whatever, that there's that raised concrete uh, thing, watering thing at Round Valley as well. So, okay, so that's we're living underwater. Um, just wanted to show you a couple of these uh, common aquatic insects here. Uh, the, the water striders, um, those are true bugs also. Uh, they have a beak, they are predators. And I, you, I'm, I left my laser pointer at home, but uh, between the front legs, you can probably see a beak coming down. 
uh, they will get dragonflies, they'll get whatever's floating on the surface of the water, and they're just liquid drinkers. They're just stabbing. Uh, this is a mayfly nymph uh, up in the top middle, and an adult mayfly. So you may find these, you know, hanging out on your front door, uh, and just they're parked. Uh, one of the things that is going on, they don't eat at this stage as an adult. They do all their eating as a nymph. Uh, and then they come out and it, their order is called ephemeroptera. They're ephemeral. They only, as an adult stage, they only live for like a day, maybe two, and that's it. And, and all they have enough energy to do is breed. And then they die and become fish food or whatever. Uh, young dragonfly nymph. And um, these guys over here, uh, many of you are familiar with blood worms. You can even buy them in a pet store. They are fly larvae. They are one of the very few insects that have evolved hemoglobin because they live in very anoxic, which means without oxygen, low oxygen. They thrive on the mucky muck that no one else lives in and that nobody else can survive. So that red, uh, is is the hemoglobin, which is helping them hold on to oxygen. You were saying the that mayflies live only a couple of days, but as uh, nymphs, they live for uh, weeks and months. Yeah, yeah. So underwater, they're long lived, and they're just building up whatever they can for their adult stage. Well, the adult going is that when they have their little mating cycles, or and that's all <laughs> they have to look forward to. That's <laughs> No food, nothing. They don't even have mouth parts that are functional. So it's just all, yeah, yeah. So they're just building up the <laughs> no, uh, And this is a young dragonfly nymph uh, at the bottom. And you can probably see some, some wing pads. Uh, what's cool with these guys, they also have gills, but their gills are actually internal up inside their abdomen. And the cool thing with that is that if they're trying to escape a predator, like a little bass coming through or a turtle or whatever, uh, if you can imagine a turkey baster, and you go squirt, 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 um, you get a little jet coming out the back end and they go swimming off away from the predator. Uh, the other thing I wanted to share with you, uh, and you can't see it very well in there, but if you've got the, the uh, dragonfly nymphs, they have an extra appendage under their head that kind of works like like my arms are, and it covers their face. And through blood pressure, they can shoot out, grab their prey, and bring it in. And it has nothing to do with their six legs. So their six legs are still fully in use. And then they just have this big reach arm that comes out. And grabs That's this one down here. Um, and you can see, maybe, uh, there, yeah, we'll pull out some dragonfly nymphs. Uh, uh, maybe Poppy, if you can get and pass them around again. Um, there's a large one, and so look at its face, and you'll see that it's kind of covered with a mask, and that's uh, that extends depending on the habitat, whether it's an algae eater or a predator. The predator will have like big hooks at the front, and then algae eaters will have lots of little tiny teeth that come out, and they just harvest like a sea turtle kind of thing. So, uh, and they just graze uh, and all that stuff. So, cool. Any questions? I'm getting to the terrestrial stuff. Uh, okay, so these pictures, I will tell you, I just pulled off the internet, but it was based on the results of the benthic macroinvertebrate sampling that happened in June in Marsh Creek. And, uh, and I sort of arranged them in most frequent to least frequent. There were many, many other species, but I just kind of took like the top eight or whatever. Amphipod shrimp, not insects, but they were they were very uh, very common. And then the, uh, the that little left-handed snail there; those are called that because their snail shell goes opposite of what most other snails go. I guess so. Um, there's a mayfly nymph, um, and then the red one again are the blood worms, which are young fly larvae. One thing to tell you: maggots, fly larvae. None of them have any legs. They're legless, but you can see a little stubby thing. The head is up toward the top, and they've got weird. Here's a better, here's a different species, but you see this weird arm looking thing coming out. Yeah, excellent. Thanks. Um, that is a, sort of a pseudo foot uh, that they have. Um, and then another mayfly nymph in the bottom right. And then these two are called caddisfly nymphs. Sometimes you see 
especially if you go to like a rocky river or whatever, and you'll see little, they look like little sleeping bags stuck to the rocks. They spin, most of them have some kind of container that they put around their abdomen. Some of them are grazers and they're uh, herbivores, uh, and some of them are predators. Some of, very few are free swimming, and some of them um, don't build little cases, but for the most part they do, yeah. I've seen maybe something like that in the headwaters in Sacramento up in Shasta. Oh, I'm sure. They they yeah. Themselves with like little stones. Yeah, yeah, yeah like stones and everything. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and by the way, one of the things, since this is sort of creek and river uh, associated, there are some species of, of caddis flies that humans wreck every weekend. They call them recreational pulse flows. So during the week, the, the streams are down uh, and then they, they build up the river level for the weekend for all the rafters to come in. And it's fun, I've done it myself. I love it, it's been really fun. But they, they build up the water levels for the weekends and then all these guys go, wow, new habitat, that's great. Let's go up on these rocks. And then as soon as the everybody, the humans go home, they turn off the dam and the water level drops, and then it suspends all these guys stuck on the rocks, and they just die. I'm sure they become bird food or whatever, but uh, yeah, so some of the things, not to feel, make you feel guilty for rafting, okay? It's great to get outside and get, you know, into the rivers, but it's uh, kind of an interesting thing, so I never thought about it. Recreational pulse flows, so they modify, you know, uh, whatever, manipulate that. Okay, let's see if we got, I think we got terrestrial. Mr. Holmes, where are you going? Um, yeah. Can you go back to that slide? Sure. For you? Um, I'm just curious, it just occurred to me that um, down by the other, the Creekside and Oakley, uh -huh. they had those beavers there that kind of dammed it up. Would these things do better where there's like more, like slower water flow or is they more quicker water flow? I mean, maybe that's why they were oh. seeing if that, if the beavers were helping with the, yeah, the beavers probably helped with some groups of, of insects, but then the reduced water flow, uh, you know, going from a, a fast stream to, you know, something that maybe be held back and everything like that would probably would have been maybe a, a detriment to the caddis flies if the, if the flow was reduced. Uh, but other insects would have been like, yeah, you know, it's great, more habitat, right? Uh, so, yeah. All right. Uh, okay. So, then insects, well, here now, nah, let me just step back. Aquatic insects, their ancestors were terrestrial. Uh, and then they returned to the water, okay? Uh, but there are many terrestrial. Now this damselfly, I took this picture off of, uh, where was it? It was uh, um, Brown Valley, actually. Gorgeous, gorgeous blue damselfly. Um, and uh, anyway, yes, they live aquatic as nymphs, but as an adult, they're aerial predators and, and all that. Uh, so one of the things to keep in mind, once you get up onto the land, is there's way more oxygen available than what may be floating around among the water. And um, the cool thing with that, insects have completely expanded and dominated in many places. There are even very small insects in Antarctica where nothing else can survive. So insects have really, spread all over the planet uh, over you know hundreds of millions of years. And because of this, they were able to really go to town and um, thanks to flight, you know, and, and evolving wings, they were able to get all over the place. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Uh, the downside of living on land is you can dry out. Water is a problem if you're terrestrial and um, especially if you're very small. Yes, I know we have days and moments where we're thirsty, but our bodies are the surface area to volume ratio. I won't get into that lesson yet. Uh, is such that we won't completely shrivel up and die within an hour or whatever. If you're a little teeny tiny, you have way more surface area from which to lose your water and evaporate. And so they, they have to evolve ways to retain water and not dry out. Um, one of the other things is they evolve direct copulation. So their little cute little spermies don't dry out. Like, you know, okay. anyway. Uh, if you're a springtail living in the mud, you don't have to worry about that. So all they're 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 fine. So cool. Let's check it out. I think and I think we're getting close to the end. Uh my my big like uh, 
apology or whatever over here is that there are so many insects around the area and many of the things you see in your yards may be stuff that you find in the in the creeks as well there isn't too much of a no dotted line where they're restricted and everything like that so this is just a random uh photo collage of things that are commonly found around the creeks but also probably found you know up here um uh, on land it's great the tarantula hawk or spider wasp uh, you know, and um, yeah, and my students do a great job, you know, not only collecting the insects, but spending the time uh, with the taxonomic keys and identifying them and finding out what, what they are. Granted, we just go down to family, which is plenty fine. Um, that would be like, you know, if I brought in an African lion, all we do is point at it and go, yeah, and that's as far as we're going. But uh, there's there's plenty to, plenty to work with. Uh, on those. So anyway, yeah, and I could probably have a thousand slides uh, up here of the stuff that, you know, we find just like restricted in the creek. So yeah, there's, you're going to see a lot of butterflies, beetles, flies, all that stuff. Uh, so there's, uh, yeah, uh, do I, I think I may have one more slide. Yeah. Is that it? Okay. Uh, since we were also talking some of the non-insects, this is the second to the last slide, I think. Um, but Definitely, you'll find our isopods up here. Uh, on the top left here, you guys, uh, these are crustaceans, and they have gills. And I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of the marine isopods. They're cousins that they're like a foot long, and they and they eat whale carcasses that come falling with every with so many other things. But it's fascinating. And and you go up on land, and and they, their bodies can't support something like a foot long and weighs three pounds or whatever. So we got the cute little ones. Uh, and um, yeah, there's a millipede over here. Narcissus is the genus that they get, you know, little four inches long or so they get pretty big. Uh, wolf spider, super common. And yes, tons of spiders, uh, obviously those species. Um, Solifuges, this, <laughs> these are kind of a trip. Um, these are arachnids uh, and if, I'm sure you find them in a lot of the grassy areas around the creeks and, and in a lot of the grasslands. Um, they are really effective predators and they're very fast. Some people call them wind scorpions. And I can't remember the other name, but their mouth parts are like paired scissors side by side. And they're really, really, what was that? Camel spiders. That's right. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. They really are star looking, and the tiniest little eyes up in the middle of that head thing. They're just bizarre looking and really fast. Side note, I think there might be a vial that has a, a potato bug or Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah there it is. The, I just made this association. They've got the same color pattern. I don't know who's copying who, but that just blew my mind when I put them side to side, and it's like. They're really indistinguishable, uh, well, you know, other than mouth parts. Uh, but yeah, and the jumping legs from and, uh, <laughs> and, then, and there's a uh, Phidippus uh, hanging upside down. The um, uh, jumping spiders, lots of those around here. So um, let's see. Do I have? <gasps> oh, <look. laughs> well, I guess beer. <laughs> uh, I don't remember the question about like. Um, I was talking about good bugs, bad bugs, which ones are beneficial, which ones might be dangerous. <laughs> um, I also teach my classes about like beneficial bloom 12. Basically, which bugs are indicators of a healthy yes. aquatic ecosystem or which ones you might find where it's not so healthy or even polluted. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me take two of those points. I'll try to remember okay. both of them. The first thing on beneficial and harmful. We got to follow that with, or what, right? Is it for beneficial for humans, or is it beneficial, or is it harmful to humans but beneficial? For example, mosquitoes. Um, they're herbivores when they are larvae underwater. Um, as adults, they are largely nectar feeders, um, and it's only the females that have mated and they want they want their kids to grow up happy and strong and healthy, right? 
Uh, and so um, the female will take a blood meal just to make sure her kids get all, you know, nine essential vitamins and minerals and protein and everything else. Otherwise, the female mosquitoes and all of the male mosquitoes are just nectar feeders and pollinators. So there's there are two schools of thought on this. There are scientists who are like, oh, we need to get rid of all the mosquitoes because there's over 2,000 species of mosquitoes and only like 34 of them spread disease among humans. So let's just wipe them out, right? And the other saying like, no, they're pollinators. Like, what are we doing? You know, yeah, it's a drag. Malaria kills a lot of people, obviously. So there's, oh, you know, <laughs> right? Uh, so there, so the beneficial stuff, um, again, we get angry with caterpillars coming in and wrecking our gardens. But then they're, when, when they become adults, all of a sudden now they're nectar feeders and pollinators and they're helping out the very plants that they may have chomped on and disfigured. Uh, and so, you know, well, oh, get, I mean, tomato worms, 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 right? Oh yeah, or, yeah, absolutely. Can't look for them. So that's kind of, you know, it's an, an ongoing discussion, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, we may have something that wrecks our garden, but it, it helps plants pollinate. Or it, and then, so I don't know what the answer to that one is. So it's cool. Um, there's, there's a thing you're afraid of that you are personally like, I wouldn't touch that. No, yes. <laughs> Things with stingers, yeah, I kind of like, I just don't want the, the inconvenience yeah. and the profanity of getting the sound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Otherwise, you know what? If, I mean, if it's big and scary and it winds up in my class, or we just get a cup and a piece of paper, and we let it go outside and then do its thing. Um, I, I personally, I'm fascinated with parasitism, and and so um, I actually had for a couple of years a colony pets. of uh, bed bugs that were contained, but every two weeks I stick them on my arm and they drink. The rest bed. of us do not like that. Are you you them? Yes. 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 And and they, they they come running to the lid of the jar like little puppy dogs, <laughs> and they go drink drink drink, and then when they're full, they run back in the jar. <laughs> oh, I never got them to jump through a hoop of fire though. That was, <laughs> uh, yeah, so there really isn't. I don't know. I don't get to see where now. Yeah. So I like to ride my bike around the street, so I yeah. notice, um, or the park down, I guess, and I see a lot of algae uh -huh. coming up. I don't know if there's algae blooms, it seems like, but what is the impact of algae blooms? Uh, well, our... yeah, yeah. So algae will, with their rapid growth, sometimes drop the oxygen levels in the water, but it's also habitat. You're probably going to see a lot of flies hopping on that algae and, and eating it and everything. So, uh, yeah. And the phosphates and all that stuff from agricultural runoff will cause you know, big algae blooms and, and concerns. And, and I know there have been like some fish die offs and stuff in you know, all over the world where we do that. So, that's um, the oxygen, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so, well, looking at the the, the, or the, the 23 study, 2023 study, yeah, is our creek healthy in that spot where they? Uh, well, oh, that's hard to say. Um, oh, that brings me to your other part of the question. That, that as indicator species, uh, there are mayflies that are, you know, that help as indicators. Stoneflies. I remember sampling years ago, and we got no stoneflies in there. They're very sensitive to pollution, uh, oxygen level drops, and stuff like that. And so we were in Marsh Creek sampling. Uh, what was it? Brian Curran, I think, was it? Yeah, we're uh, way back. I don't know. Anyway, uh, we used to work together on some of this, and we'd sample and we'd, we'd find uh, some mayfly nymphs and dragonflies and, and uh, all that stuff, but we never found stoneflies in there. And so it was like, mm, maybe not super healthy, but maybe stoneflies further upstream, uh, you know, so where less human impact. Uh, and maybe some more aeration and then bubbling down road and big wide channels. Now, stoneflies need water year round, right? Because, like, our creek dries up completely from like, because it's mostly yeah. farmers' canal water, I guess, that they pump through the farmers, get it irrigated, then it fills up, and then it goes away. Oh, wow. I know yeah. the periods where it's sitting right by Thank Creek and Deer Creek where it's dry all of August. Yeah. yeah. And so, is that what that would, that would, affect the stoneflies, right? Because they wouldn't have water. Yes, yeah. And actually all of the aquatic insects that would wind up being bird food and, and everything else 
go away with that. So even jays and uh, mockingbirds and either songbirds and stuff like that. And that. So, um, did I answer? Yes. Yeah. And this, I don't know if anybody else knows this. There were hardly any June bugs. Ah, yeah. Okay, okay. The Sierra beetles, right? Yeah, yeah. June bugs. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, really? Okay, that's right. There used to. Yeah, there used to be. Used to be a problem on the front door every day. This year, I think I saw five. On the wow. Okay, something to think about. Pay attention to these things. I, you know, you never know. You know, too. And that's the right. thing is humans sometimes we're just like we'll walk right past you like, oh, that's cute beetle, and not really realize how much of an impact it has. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, very interesting. Um cool. Well, uh, do you remember my daughter was working at the Antioch Dunes, the restoration site down there? Mm -hmm. And then what's the butterfly down there? The little blue one? Yeah, yeah. 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 And what is the what is the plant it grows on? Oh, it's not blue, but the lens metal mark. Uh, lens metal mark. Yeah. It does just metal mark. Yeah. 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 So anyway, the, the she was doing a she was doing a survey down there, and uh, they're scared that it's extinct because they couldn't find any this year at all. Yeah, Last year they found one man. Yeah. Wow. 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 They can't find any of the what of the plants or none the, of the lens metal marks. Um, the bugs are still pretty good, but. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah. Wow. There was a lot of action blue new ones last month. And okay. Okay. The one of the options. Yeah. Oh, wow. Some skippers and common checkers. Yeah. 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 Wow. 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 Mm -hmm. any, any questions from the uh the Zoom attendees? <laughs> Anything? Oh, there we go. We got any questions? <laughs> All right. Nothing's popping up there. So yeah. All right, you guys good? Everybody, uh, everybody happy? All right. Good to be back.